welcome, welcome everyone to our guest expert interview today by popular demand. We have Dr. Cindy Ryan. Uh, she has been with me for about three years now as one of my peer support coaches. And we had a virtual retreat for our uh, Keto Lifestyle crew members last month. And they absolutely loved her topic for the retreat. And so we're back to do an extended version of that for even more people. So welcome, Dr. Cindy Ryan. Thank you. Great to be here. Wonderful. Love it. Um, so will you just share people your, uh, you know, your, your background, uh, you know, who you are and how you got interested in this soul tending topic? Yes. Great. Um, so I am an ordained pastor and uh, have a, a doctorate degree in pastoral counseling. And so those two topics, of course, headed me down the path of how do you take care of yourself and your soul. And I've had a lot of opportunities in, in working in churches and I've been a hospice chaplain, a hospital chaplain, I've done a lot of counseling with people along the way. And at the same time, I was a busy uh, young woman in ministry, wife, eventually mother of three, and working full time. And, and actually out of my own experience, not even so much my education, started realizing I, I need to take better care of myself for the long run. And for me, that, that occurred in certain ways in which my, I think my body and my soul and my emotions all started telling me, giving me signs. Mm. And, and so from my own journey, really, I, and I, I, I'm, I'm sorry to say I wasn't that aware or uh, quick about it. It took several sort of wake up calls for me to realize this is really important. And I may not have learned it with these degrees I have, mm. but it, this really, really matters. And, and so I would say the past 10 years for sure, I've been on a healing journey mm. that includes physical, uh, emotional, and spiritual. And I've really studied a lot, written a lot, lived a lot about that. And it has become now my favorite topic, mm. especially for women. Women are my favorite group, I think, because we just relate to each other well. And, and so, I've just developed this body of material that I've I've taught and shared in lots of places, like even for healthcare workers and mm. even in some school settings and in retreats for women and all of that. And it wasn't until we were doing the virtual retreat mm. that I realized, you know, there are so much in my own keto journey that parallels this soul tending. Mm. <laughs> so I um, invited myself to share that day and it, it seemed like a lot of women were craving that. Yeah, it really resonated. It hit a spot. And uh, I just love, it's something that we hear as women so much. Like, oh, you have to do self-care. But usually it's presented as like, we'll go to the spa and get a massage and a pedicure and, right. or take a bath, right? Like right. those no. are the options that we're told. And everybody's response is typically like, I'm so busy. I don't have time for that. And as you lead this through this, uh, this, uh, training the session people are going to have a lot of ahas about how that does actually fit into your life and how it must uh yes. Yes. fit into your life um do you, so you mentioned that that um this wasn't something that so 10 years ago this wasn't something that you were really aware of or, or speaking on or anything like that and you said that there were some things that were happening for you that like really big eye-opening things so what were some of the signs that were wake up calls for you personally that made you realize like, oh, wait a minute, I do need to figure this piece out too. So one of the first ones was actually way before the 10 years ago. So let's say 15 or so. I went to my regular doctor's appointment was, you know, the yearly thing was rushing to get there. Like I always am. I had a hundred things on my mind. I had three kids in my home, you know, I was raising, I took work to do in the lobby because who has time to wait on a doctor, you know, mm. Um, got in there and my blood pressure was really high mm. and and she said are you are you under a lot of stress and I'm like I, I evaluated my I stopped I'm like thinking I'm like no it's a regular day and, <laughs> and she's like no are you sure do it again you know think again I'm like 
and I could feel that buzz of stress. Mm -hmm. I could feel, but I was like, this, this is what I do. Sorry. You know, this is what I do. And yeah, stress is normal. <laughs> and, and so she was like, you know, we're going to have to put you on some medication or something. And that was a shock to me because I was in my forties mm. for blood pressure medication. So that was like the first sign and the first awareness I had of like, Oh, you mean my body's maybe not going to carry me through everything my soul and emotions mm. want to do. That's mm. weird. Mm. And, and then came along some, uh, hard events, lost a really close friend and colleague mm -hmm. real suddenly, the guy I was actually working with in the church. So big grief, big responsibilities for me. At six months to the day after that, a breast cancer diagnosis. Mm. I was 49, no family history. Mm. So kind of same thing of like, wow, you know, wow, like, I've got a physical wake up call here and I, I knew enough to know, you know, uh, emotions and stress and cancer and any kind of physical thing go hand in hand. Um, but do you know that it wasn't even that that really got me? It took like going even further along and having uh, almost like an emotional thing happen to me that that made me think, all right, now this is, you know, okay, I've learned my body might break. Uh, now my mind might break, like mm. seriously, I, you know, so those kind of personal things are really what woke me up to, I need a whole reboot mm. and I need to pay a lot more attention to myself mm. and my soul. And it does for women. I think it feels selfish at first to even mm. talk like that because we are the hub of our families and often our communities, often our workspaces. We run every holiday. I mean, just think of it. Like, would would Christmas happen without us or Thanksgiving? You know, no. Uh, we just do a lot. Uh, in in every family I know, the women are the communicators for all things. You know, and so I, I really had to rethink all of that. Kind of go back then to some of my training and and so forth to put together a set of things that really might be helpful to women and others on, on, and I call it soul tending, but if, if, if someone's out there and they're not a religious person in, in that institutional kind of way, it's perfectly fine to substitute emotional self-care, self-care. I really feel like it's, it's similar. And, um, and I think that the rewards are huge and immediate. And you know how in keto we've learned we see it in, the, in our clients, like within three days, they can see the difference mm -hmm. eating like that. And that always stunned me like, wow, you can help yourself in three days. Yeah. You can hurt yourself yeah. in three days too, by the way. Yeah. But the same thing with self-care and soul tending. You can add in one or two things and immediately see results, mm -hmm. which I yeah. love. Yeah. Quick fit. Well, well, quick results, not a quick fix. Honestly, though, if every one of us added one thing tomorrow, we would feel better. Well, and the nice thing is we're going to get into this, but it doesn't even have to be adding anything. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. And that's a beautiful thing. <laughs> yeah. You can actually have less things to do and be taking care of yourself. Yeah. Yes. Excellent. Oh, so glad you're here and so glad that you're in my life. Um, so let's talk about then. So we've, you've, we've already kind of started going on this path. So let's talk more about like, what are the benefits? Like, why would somebody even want to take the time to do this in their busy lives when they have all this other stuff to do? Like, so for right. you, uh, you know, you, you, right. you said there are benefits very quickly, but yes. kind of share some of those things with yes. us. So what if I told you? There are some things you can do or not do that would make you happier, that would make you more yourself. And I call that integration. Um, so to me, it's like when our souls and our bodies begin to match up mm. or, or our emotions in our bodies, let's say. And so many times when we're on the run, I think we're we're disconnected from our souls ourselves mm. and, and, and we really are out of touch with um, our true selves. 
our real selves. And so when, when we are soul tending, I think we become integrated, like body and soul matched up. And that's where, you know, you, do you ever see people where you say, man, she is, she, what you see there is what you get. Like, she mm. is real. Mm. She is transparent. She is honest. And usually we gravitate towards people like that. We like them. You know, and you can think about the opposite of it. A fake or a mm. veneer kind of person or yeah. you can't quite get to. Uh, so I think, you know, be, being well hydrated in your soul helps helps you be real and integrated and and again more yourself it's, it's a lot easier to be real if, if you're all together and then that's even the thing that i think co- creates integrity mm-hmm. you, can, you can trust a person because they're whole yeah um and so that's another one um a sense of peace comes with that and i think we all crave that Especially in our kind of weird world, there's so much uh, non-peace out there that wouldn't it be great to have kind of a strong inner peace, sense of calm that carries you through whatever it is you have to face. Um, I think when we are, when our souls are hydrated, we have a better ability to notice and appreciate and be grateful for things. And that again, increases your well-being. Mm. But when you're on the fly and your body and soul are disconnected and you're not able to be reflective or anything, uh, it's not, you can't, you're, it's hard to be grateful. Um, mm. I, I think that when you are, are well-tended, you, you become clearer on a lot of stuff. And we've also mm. talked about this with keto eating, right? Your mind becomes clearer because it's fueled with the right stuff now fat and protein. And I've noticed that I'm a lot clearer, but add a little soul tending on there. And, you know, it's, you don't have a lot less gray areas. You have a lot less, uh, you know, just floundering over, should you do something or should you not? You're listening to your soul. You're listening to your body. So you become clearer. And so I think all of those are great side effects. Well, just even going back to that one where you talked about when people are being their authentic self, like the opposite of fake. I, it really brought that together for me. Cause I don't, I, I'd always have a sense of like, Oh, you can tell when somebody's fake and how you, it doesn't feel good to be around them, but I never really thought about why that was right. <clears throat> You're right. Because when, especially women aren't doing that self care, aren't doing that soul tending, they have to put on this exterior that everything is perfect in our life. And we can sense that we can, we can sense that in those other, in other people. And so you can move into that place of authenticity and because you're, what you're putting out on the outside matches what's on the inside. So, And you've listened to your soul. So, you know, and that's mm-hmm. what I always say, she will tell you. And I always call her, I talk about, especially with women, you know, feminine, you can call your soul or yourself. A she, mm. she will talk to you. She'll give you feedback. And that really leads into the next little part, which is about how do you know if your soul needs that? Mm-hmm. And and I learned uh, years ago as I was studying all this, I came up on a book by a Christian author named Max Licato. He writes a lot of, of books. And this is an old one, but it's called Come Thirsty. In this book, he talks about the fact that your soul can be dehydrated just like your body. And that our bodies, you know, we know, you could start out the day well hydrated, but by noon, because of a variety of factors, including stress or whatever, you become dehydrated. It's a, it's, you're never like, oh, good, I'm hydrated, done for my life, you know. (laughs) It's a daily balanced thing and something you have to pay attention to all the time. But our bodies, we know, will give us those signs, Right. You know, and they're the typical ones. You know, you first you get thirsty, then you get this, then you get that, then your muscles hurt, then you get dizzy and collapse and die. I mean, you need water, your body does. So same thing with the soul. What I think is that we're not trained or whatever to notice those signs and think of them as a a soul cry uh, or a emotional self-care cry. And so I've developed out of his work, 10 that I think women should pay attention to and men too. Uh, the first one is fatigue. And 
And so sometimes we beat ourselves up like, oh, I'm so tired, but I'm older, it's the end of the day or whatever. But it really may be that your soul just needs attention. Mm. And we don't think like that mm. normally, right? Right. Um, the second one is irritability. And I know we've all had that lately. I think the pandemic's made it worse. It's brought out the, the worst in a lot of people for lots of reasons. But we mostly think if people would stop irritating us, we wouldn't be irritable. <laughs> Instead of thinking, I need to pull back mm. and see what my soul is asking for mm. or, or do some self-care. So that's one. And I always just invite women, like, just check yourself off on these as you go and we'll see. Uh, uh, this one's huge, reaching for the wrong things. Mm. And that coincides, again, with our keto eating, right? And we struggle with that all the time because we have learned most of us to reach for the wrong things. And you can even picture yourself or I can in the afternoon after a stressful day, like I was talking about in my previous life, um, having that fatigue, that hunger, that uh, irritability and stress you're trying to wind down and you think you need X, mm. right? You're absolutely sure you need to go to the pantry and get that thing. And that is not what it is. It, mm. it, it is that your soul needs attention, a rest, a pause, something. And, and you can fill in the blank with all those things. Some, some people it's alcohol and drugs. Some people it's like the internet, I'm gonna buy Amazon out or whatever, or we reach for the wrong relationships or we reach for too much Netflix or internet, on and on and on. But reaching for the wrong things when it's really your soul needs a drink of water. Mm. You know, uh, multitasking is another one. And again, women are superheroes in multitasking. I'm convinced we're better at it than any gender I know. And, uh, and we should multitask because we've been given that gift. I think we can intuit on a multi-level. We can do things on a multi-level. We communicate that way. But it depletes your soul. Mm. It, 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 it goes against your self-care when you're doing a thousand things. And so just simply to pull back and say, what if I did one of these things at once with focus can just help you immensely uh, in hydration. So I love, I love for us to think about that one. Uh, noise is another one. We fill our lives with noise. Mm -hmm. And it is a long held spiritual principle across all religions that God's spirit likes to ride in on silence or that good mm -hmm. things happen in, in silence. And if you think about our lives right now, we have very little of that. Mm. Especially, again, some pandemic things have made us all work at home together or brought people into our homes that weren't there before, mm -hmm. you know, um, or changed up how we do things in, in the time alone. For other people, they've had too much time alone, and I'll talk about mm -hmm. that. But like, mostly we're just always turning on a TV or a podcast or a book or a thing or music, and and it takes some practice, but it can be real hydrating to your soul for, for there to be silence. Mm -hmm. um, blaming others is a great one, and I see this all the time in life, and I'm sure I do it as well or something feels wrong and you just think if my if my husband would do this or my kids weren't like that or if my church or my work or my po political situation or whatever would be not this way you know we'd all be better and, and really of course it's a, a maturity principle as well as a counseling principle that the only thing you can control is you so it actually helps not at all to blame all that other stuff. And I, I sometimes hate that. You know, it's true in parenting and everything like, you know, you can't control your kid, you can control yourself. Uh, and so blaming others though all the time is a sign of soul dehydration or can be. Um, being out of balance and that's what I was referring to of just maybe having a too many people in our lives and not enough alone time or vice versa. And it was huge for me when I finally just learned what I am, introvert versus extrovert. Mm. 
uh, and you know how that's defined is or how I've learned to define it is where you get your energy. Mm. So some people get their energy from being alone and having quiet. Some other people get their energy from people and interactions. It's really good to know that. Mm. I lived my entire life until my third kid went to college, which is only four years ago, people-y. Do you, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. grew up in a home with six people there, went to college and lived in a little dorm with a roommate, and so on and so on and so on, had three kids, never was alone until that last one left for a little bit, and realized I get my energy here. My soul is fed and some quiet. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important, I think, to know what you need. Uh, and I think all of us are on a spectrum. We need a little of both. Mm -hmm. uh, but how, how out of whack was I? And then imagine my job, pastoring, ministering, counseling, people -y. No wonder I arrived with the high blood pressure mm -hmm. and those other things. You know, it was totally out of balance with what mm -hmm. hydrated me. Uh, being self-absorbed is one where we think everything's about us. Well, and add, add a little more the self-absorbed thing to, um, we tend to think of that as like narcissism where somebody like thinks they're better than everyone else and they're very cocky, but self-absorbed can also be like a very negative um, mindset that you're in where um, it's like a chronic pity party. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, you said that you must not like me or they didn't talk to me. So therefore they, I must you know, maybe I smelled bad or they just don't like me. I don't have any friends. Right. So that's self-absorbed where you think that everything that everyone else does is about you as well. Right. Um, and, and that can be so hard on a person. And again, so dehydrating, you know, where you're imagining all these people are against you kind of our situations when really it's probably not that well-crafted mm -hmm. or nobody's thought about it that much. And that, right. but that, I think when we're hydrated in our soul and our emotions, we can see more clearly, like, that's really not about me. Mm -hmm. Negative or probably even positive, you know, mm -hmm. that we just become more anchored. So that, that self-blaming is, I mean, or that blaming, I mean, that self-absorbed is really interesting. And I still always love when my daughter was a teenager, we were kind of into it. And she said, I go, you're, you, um, you think everything's about you. And she said, she just paused and looked at me like horrified. And she said, it is. <laughs> and then I'm like, what? And she's like, my life is about me. So I get that part. Like yeah. in our own lives, everything is about us, but it sure helps to soften that perspective, to hydrate it and to be able to like, just have a little more, a, a bigger view mm. in yeah. some of that. Um, the ninth one is indecisiveness. If you find yourself indecisive about things, and again, that can be everything from like what we were talking about with you today, like, should I move out of this apartment or stay? Or this person called me and asked me to be on that committee. Oh, I don't know. You know, it's all gray. And when you are integrated, hydrated, well tended to, those things become crystal clear. And that's where I think we also learn sort of our mission and passion. We learn who we are. Our daily activities follow that. And so all those things become so much easier. The reverse of it is, is like we've all seen um, CEOs and, and pastors and presidents and sports stars and all these people who we think had everything who make a stupid decision hmm. and rain it all. And we're all out there going, why did they choose this? And I firmly believe they chose that because they were so busy, probably so disconnected from their self-care, soul care, it became gray to them and this looked good, right? This relationship, this money I need to skim off the top or, you know, whatever, fill in the blank, that we don't have perspective and our ethics get all messed up when that happens. And so mm -hmm. find yourself indecisive it may be a, a cry from your soul. And then the last one for me is where you just feel like something's missing. 
Mm. And we all get to, we have stages like that, right? We go through maybe midlife or we go through a change in jobs or, or we kind of wonder like, what's my purpose? What's my role? As a pastor, I've talked to you know 90 year olds who say, I just don't know why I'm still here. That's mm. a soul cry or a emotional self care cry. And, and so if there's just a feeling of emptiness, I think adding in the hydrating behaviors can be, can address that. Mm. And, and so for me, for me, when that happened, I was able to like realize here's the thing I, here's my mission, kind of what I love, my passion. And then there were so many cool things that fit in under there. And that's when I realized, oh, I can write or I can speak or I can keto coach a little bit, or I can, a lot of really healthy, fun things fall under that category. And so it wasn't anymore like, I don't know my purpose. It's like, I have so many exciting ways to live it. Hmm. So you talk about a good side effect. Yeah. Well, I just realized all your, your 10 things, how to recognize that you need this are also like you flip those on the other side and they're all the benefits you're going to get as well. So yes. yeah. if you find yourself suffering from any of those, soul tending is going to help relieve that stress or noise. Right. So, yeah. and, then, and then there's such a cool part of it. And this is what I think most people don't realize. And I did this as well. We think, or I did, that soul tending had to be a certain set of approved by somebody behaviors or something that were going to be really hard, mm. um, boring, uh, time consuming, yeah. time consuming, yucky, like, uh, uh, you know, like for me in the religious world, it was like, am I going to have to learn Greek and read like somebody's theology of the Bible and, Greek every day or, you know, just, and it was such an eye opener to me when I realized we're all created to be our own person. Mm -hmm. Nobody's the same. And what feeds our soul is going to be different. Mm -hmm. it's, and the good news is, the great news is, it, it it's going to be what delights you. Mm -hmm. it, so imagine that for a second. Like, you don't have to do the horrible, boring thing that you, like, on your knees at four o'clock in the morning, praying for six hours. Like <laughs> you get to pick what is going to give you joy and peace and delight. And, and, and I, I love that part. Mm. So uh, it's a self-design thing and it's a change it up thing. Like you don't even have to keep it the same. I think it's important for it to become a habit. And I'll talk about that a little bit, but like, uh, I, I talk to people sometimes who say something to me, and this is in the religious world, but like, I'm really not growing, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm bored. And I'll ask like, well, what do you do for self-care or soul care? And they'll tell me something like, well, I've been in the same Bible study with these people for 40 years. You know? and I'm like, oh, well, maybe you need to get some new people, some new study, um, a different environment. It may have served you well, and now you need to switch. And so how fun is that to be able to get to switch it up with what gives you joy? So what about, I'm um, up next, I want to get into like what are actually some of the techniques for soul, soul tending, but um, I'm just going to ask a question now because I can feel people that are watching this going, um, they've, they've got reservations about taking care of themselves, right? Because they're so used to doing everything for everyone else. You know, I know, um, um, uh, one of the big ones is like, well, I don't want to let anybody down. I don't want to hurt anybody else's feelings. Right. So they put themselves in a place of, well, I don't have, I don't, I don't want to change anything because it's going to negatively affect these other people in my life. So what do you, what do you say to people that have that kind of concern? What I'd like to talk about, and I, I do speak of it in more religious terms, but you can add, you can do it any way you want. Uh, I like to say um, there's it's the principle of God's math. And, and what that is, it makes no sense. It, so you, you do imagine 
pulling away from some of those needs and being able to come back with more of your real, happy, peaceful, integrated self for them. So who wants to give the people you love the most the crappiest version of yourself? Mm. Or the most worn out, irritable, blaming you? Mm. And that's often what we do, right? We feel so obligated to all these good things in people that we're giving them our uh, remnant our drugs or you know used coffee grounds or whatever mm -hmm. and, and so to me it's that principle of subtraction actually like you pull back you take away and you end up with more and i promise you it works yeah and, and your people and this is what i've thought about as a mother did I want my children to see me doing things, but being sick and unwell and not happy and radiant about it? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. or, do you, or, or do you want to show your kids like this is how, this is how a whole well-tended person approaches the world. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I decided somewhere in there, like, I, that's what I want them to see. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people even ask me faith-wise, like, how do I make my kids have faith or my grandkids? And what I say is, show them a fun, happy, fulfilled you doing that stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's contagious. So, uh, and it goes back to that principle of kind of letting, letting, bless you, letting go of trying to control things to where you, you only deal with what you can, which is yourself. Mm. And you, you end up with more to give back. Yeah. That, that goes back to what you talked about of being, being authentic, being your authentic self attracts people to you and what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, so let's go there next. Let's talk yeah. about your, you know, your, soul hydration techniques okay. I just love this yeah. this phrase too is very um and so what i would say in general about these is i'm going to say about 10 of them again a person just gets to decide and what i would say is if somebody leaves this call or recording saying i'm going to do one of that one of those sounds fun to me i'll do one daily then that's everything Hmm. So if anybody left saying, I'm going to do all these, that's, that's more of what we've been doing in life. Too much, too overloaded. That's not how it's supposed to be. And so I just think, how great is it? You can pick the one or the version of one that, that might sound the most delightful. And then I would say, add it into daily. And that was really key for me. And no one taught me that that we usually put self-care, soul care under the heading of, wouldn't it be nice? So like we all sort of have that secret list of like, wouldn't it be nice if I had a beach house? And wouldn't it be nice if I got to do X or had this kind of car or something? I think we put that on there. Yeah, yeah, right. Wouldn't it be nice if I didn't have to work so hard or have all these people to take care of and I could take care of myself. But the truth of the matter is, it doesn't need to be there. It needs to be on that. I will do it. I will do this one thing for me every day. Kind of so like I drink, really, drink water every day or you, you know, right. you sleep so every day. Done with our commitment to our eating, right? I will track every day. You know, we've added in the small daily steps that make that vision a reality. And, and so it's the same with these spiritual principles, I think. And I learned, I'm an old school person who, every day has a to-do list of some kind. Hmm. And I know some people don't. My, my college son just told me he, has, he hates lists. And I'm like, well, I just think that's a sign of you being able to manage everything in your mind right now or something. Like, I, that's not normal. But I think most of us probably have some version of a daily list, uh, either in our phone or our mind or on a piece of paper. But what I learned to do was move my soul tending to the top of the list. Mm. and to take it as seriously as I take everything else. Mm. So like today, I took it, I took my soul tending things as seriously as being on this call with you right now. 
And that was a huge mental shift for me because it used to be, well, that would be nice if I could sit in silence or that would, so, so I'd say push it to daily. And, and even if you just try it for 21 days, give it a trial run and see, see what happens in your life. But so some of the practices, and again, anybody can change these up, but one of the first I would say is some form of silence, meditation, or prayer. And there are lots of ways to do that. And it doesn't take long. It just, for most of us, we're so depleted of it, just takes a few minutes of, of sitting in silence or going before God or, or figuring out a wellness meditation or a just like we were talking about earlier today on another call, but like, I eat keto, I make good choices, I care for myself, you know, that's meditation. Mm -hmm. So I would think setting up something like that, and then you add, if it, if you like it and it hydrates you, then you add a little bit over time to where it's five minutes, then 10, then maybe longer. Um, so that's one. And journaling, I'm really big on journaling, and I know some people aren't, but a daily journal has, that's the key in my last 15 years of healing. And I've set up a little formula for myself and how I do it, but it includes um, reflecting on the day before hmm. and the day that is about to be. And I found that to be really key because we don't do that, hmm. right? Who has time to think about the day before? But if you take a few minutes and think about it, sometimes you realize that interaction didn't go so well. And I'd like to go back and say to that person something more. Mm. Or I put too much in my day and I'm learning from reflection that I need to have three things to do instead of 27 or on and on and on. And so I just take the time to think about how was Monday? In the morning, I will do this. I will think about how was today. From my choices to my interactions to whatever. And how would I like it to be different? And it helped me so much. That's actually where I learned to get a keto coach. Because I'm like, I am so sick of writing about this issue in my life that I can't, in all my wisdom, and all the wisdom of the internet, figure out. I need a helper. But it was in reflecting over how much am I going to write about my weight and my, you know, struggles till I deal with it. Mm. And it came from journaling, mm. you know. Um, so I reflect about the day that was and the day that will be. And that's, I think, the practice of setting your intention for the day, realizing I want my days to end with well-being in terms of how I feel instead of stress. I want to feel happy at the end of the day. And then mm. I have some control over structuring it so that it will be like that. Mm. So that's a little part of like what I do in a journal. But you can do it. A person can do anything. Um, then I do go back and read them. And that's kind of boring too because it's like, well, my life wasn't that interesting in these last six weeks. But it has helped me see some patterns, helped me see some stuff. Sometimes it helps me see there was so much in that six weeks that mm. was a lot and I, I did it okay. Or what saved me was this, you know, and so um, I, I've learned some of those things and that's really a whole other workshop or retreat. But journaling is big for me and it's part of, and it happens in the quiet. So you can stack these habits too. And that that's good. Um, exercise, I think, is one of them. It can be a soul hydrating behavior. We always think of it as good for our bodies. It's really good for our souls. Mm. And depending on what you choose and how you choose it, I choose to walk outside. So it's another um, kind of a solitude is a practice. I just take my dog and she never talks. And, you know, uh, you're out in creation, which is another one. But exercise, I think, is, is great. Um, focusing on the present moment. We're not that good at that. At, 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 um, just realizing we need to be still and present to ourselves for a moment. It, it takes seconds to, to breathe 
focus on your breath. If you focus on your breath, you can't think about anything else and it gives your mind a vacation. And sometimes our minds just need a vacation. My, my yoga teacher teaches that if you, if you can actually take the minute to feel your feet and hands, you're grounding yourself in the present moment. Mm. So just picture somebody could choose that like mm. every day I'll be present for two minutes mm. and breathe and give my mind a vacation. There's also apps that help with this now. So that's cool. Um, another one, and this is one of my favorites, um, expanding your margin or white space in your life. And what, what you can do is, uh, Imagine your day as a white piece of paper kind of typed with margin, the white space around it. And most of us fill our days too full. Uh, and it is in the margin, the white area, that soul tending happens. Hmm. It's in the margin that um, rest happens. It's in the margin that funny things happen. Hmm. Like you, like I'm thinking of you and your comedy, like, I doubt you can think of good jokes on the run as much as you can if you have some white space. Mm. And so like what you might do for that is create more white space. Mm. Or some of us back when I was in full-time ministry, my whole day would be filled back to back with thing or person or meeting. Mm. And one time I had a therapist tell me for every emotional hour you spend or intense, you need three off. And I told her, I was like, you have got to be kidding. Like, are you in the world? Are you, do you live with mm -hmm. any of us in this world? But now I can see how much sense that makes. And what if we even just thought like that? Like, what if we even managed to take, okay, you know, I had an intense morning. I'm for sure going to have a nice lunch break. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us fill every spot. And yeah. Fill every I feel like that's something I've learned to do over the last few years. Uh, and it was, it was really hard because as a go, go, go type A personality where like, I need to achieve, I need to make as much money as possible. I need to change as many lives as I can. I need to make a name for myself. Uh, I can't do that if I take time off. And, um, but just like you're talking about the God's math uh, concept is, that by actually carving out space in my day, and I'll do this the week ahead of time, is I'll go out and, and I'll block off time on my schedule. And especially, you know, like you said, after some intense things, I'm like, I'll block that off as well. So that, because there are some appointments that come in that are automated for me. And so I block those off so that I know, like, I'm going to need that space and I'm going to claim that space for myself. And it's a margin. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and and that's something that has come with uh, age and wisdom is knowing that I I need that. Um, I used you know back when we could travel for conferences, I learned about myself as well that um, I needed bookend days of nothing. Um, so if I'm going to go travel for three to five days someplace, I needed the day before and the day I got back of just nothing on my on my calendar because um, I just needed that time to kind of recharge. This total side side note here, but it turns out that there's genetic markers actually that make it so people are less stress tolerant and they need that. So apparently I have some of those, but it's common. Everybody needs like more margin space, more white space in their yes. life. So, And there's a book if people want to read more about it. And again, it's not new, but Dr. Richard Swinson with an E on the end uh, is a, phys a, a medical physician and he wrote a book called Margins based on the, the, his patients. He's seeing all these patients coming in with all these complaints, physical, body, mm -hmm. real. But what he learned was common among everybody was their lack of margin. Mm. And that actually what you needed to heal physically, and I do, I do believe our bodies and our souls or our bodies and our emotions work hand in hand and they'll talk to us. Mm. They'll tell us, they'll give us information. But out of all of his patients, he came out with, what we need are margins. Hmm. So I think it's a fun thing to be able to think about where can I add some white space? And, you know, it can be anything from working a puzzle to you're reading on your back porch or hmm. uh, 
it's both time and then you know what you're doing in that time but it i don't think anybody would object to it because it, it it's the fun lovely happy things of life mm. that happen in those margins so and then that leads me to my favorite thing and it has to do i think it goes here that we alluded to it is like sometimes to gain margin you need to subtract something mm. and one of the most uh, fun activities I've had in my new life, which is in the last five years since I quit full-time ministry and a more freelance, was deciding what am I going to subtract that actually sucked the life out of my soul? And just to reflect on that, you talk about a good journaling exercise, write down like, what do I really find draining? And what you may find is like, it can be people, certain people it could be for me it was like meetings i don't control not your meetings um <laughs> but but there were meetings i was going to where nothing was produced from those meetings and they weren't planned well and i learned like i'm not going to give my time to that mm -hmm. because not only is it a waste of that hour uh, it's a waste of a lot of energy in my soul that went into it. Mm -hmm. So scratch, scratch, scratch. And there's ways to nicely just take those things off your plate. But, but as well, I had to learn about people. Ended up saying to even friends, some friends, like, what we had in our friendship was really good and at a time. But the time has changed. And now I think, you know, we might need to go our separate way. And again, hard to do, but you know it's right if you feel immediate relief and your soul's like, thank you. Uh, and so I've practiced that and really learned, wow, you know, I can honor my soul by just subtracting some things. And where it gets really tough, also a whole nother seminar, is when it's like your family. Mm. When you identify like, oh, that's mine. Mm -hmm you know or not I mean that's my you know sibling that's toxic to my soul mm. and, and guess what you can minimize those interactions and still be in your family but have learned for yourself I'm not going I'm not I'm not doing that the same so mm. how fun is that oh, subtract and sometimes it's as simple as you're subtracting junk from your house <clears throat> and it becomes a spiritual principle like that, like, oh, I have more space for what I love and what's beautiful. You know, it feeds my soul. Um, so I think that goes in that whole margin white space, subtract out that which is soul draining. Uh, I, I had a neighbor who, so... I've described that my, my morning walk is early, alone, uh, in creation. And every morning he would come and walk with me. And mm. I think he thought she needs protection or, and he was one of those people that uh, just talked about toxic things. He didn't, it wasn't about like, oh, what's going on with you or anything like that. It would be like, oh no all the trees are going to die because it froze and their buds were out and i'm like being bombarded by just his mm -hmm. information and i put up with that like a year and a half until one day i think my soul won and i just said you know what um, i do a lot of thinking when i'm alone and not today if that's you know good with you not today he's never walked with me since he's also never spoken to me since but every single day, my soul delights in the absence. Yeah. So imagine just something like that. It was a, it was a test for you, and you it took you a year and a half to. <laughs> and then to recognize what your your soul will let you know if that's good yeah. or bad for you, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, I think I'm on number six, but uh, it is rest, and we're not great at this. Mm. And I think when your body rests, so does your soul. And again, it's that same principle I was telling you, maybe give your mind a vacation, you know, maybe take a break, that's good, but just allowing rest. We were meant to rest. 
And sometimes that's way more than just a night's sleep. Mm. Um, so uh, nature, I mentioned, is my personal belief, and this is religious, but that creation was designed to reach us mm. and speak to us and fill us. Mm. And, and the colors, the smells, the seasons, what it's like outside, that if we will just go outside, even if it's for five minutes and breathe and look up or notice things about the, the seasons and the you know vegetation and the colors, your soul will be fed. And some of us go every day inside or in an office or in a car and we just don't. So that's a huge one. Um, Simplify goes along with subtract, but you're great at this with our eating, right? You taught, you know what? You do not have to make a casserole. You don't have to think about all the stuff. Have a piece of meat and a cheese, and you're you're doing that now with the get unstuck. Um, or I'm I'm still like trying to I don't know grill these chicken breasts and marinate them and do something, and you're having a sausage stick or oh yeah, a meat stick and a yogurt. <laughs> I'm like, oh, she just got it so simple. That's so great. <laughs> All my life, the times I've simplified something, the reward has been great soul-wise. Mm. Even like my kids used to fight over like, who's going to sit in the front seat of the car? And we argued over it every time. And finally, I'm like, okay. At that time, there were two of them. I'm like, you, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, we alternate. Our life was better. And so I just, you know, I think if anybody can think of any way to simplify anything, my daughter has toddler boys, they're three and four, and she color coded them. One of them is blue, one of them is green. The toothbrush is blue, the glass is blue, the this is, you know, and so it's like, God, this is so simple. We don't have to think every time whose toothbrush this is. And so I just think anything you can routinize or simplify gives you more time for soul. Mm. Um, I already talked about the power of daily, but that's the trick. Uh, put it in a daily habit. And it, I, I liken it to brushing your teeth. Nobody brushes our teeth because we want it, we're inspired by it or, <laughs> right? We yeah. do it because somewhere back there in our past, someone taught us that was good. And it became a routine that we now don't even think about. It. And it continues to be good for us. Yeah. You don't say like, oh, I'm just going to take Sundays off. Or you don't question somebody doing something every day. Like, really? Right. You, don't take, you don't take Mondays off of brushing your teeth? Right. <laughs> right. So every morning, because I want to, and it's now a habit, I get up early on purpose, I journal, I'm quiet, I write some stuff, then I walk. I mean, I have my routine and I don't think about it anymore. And I don't go without it. This morning, I had a little procedure that I had to be there at 530. I did that soul tending thing before that. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I honor it and it honors me by, by doing that. So, and then I would also say, pay attention to who you are. Like if you're not a morning person, do not do what I just said. <laughs> if you're a night person, then that's your time, you know, to add in a practice. So go with who you are and, and your natural, right? That's the low hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. Do not say, I hate getting up early and then make yourself. You know, um, and then I already said this, choose what you like, choose what feeds you. I finally learned to do devotional reading that I like. That's mm. funny. That's off color sometimes. That's like a, 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 just a different kind of stuff. And I, I choose what I like and it feeds my soul. Mm. Uh, and I do it, right? Because I like it. Um, and that, and so, that fits with what we've been talking about today. Not only like picking the foods that you like, don't, don't eat the ones you don't like, eat the ones. And then also more general too, picking the lifestyle you want to live. Like you pick 
the what is what is the phrase that we came up with? Like you pick the oh, two pages back here. Um, you pick the framework that's easiest for you, uh, your lifestyle and everything. Yeah. And we even said at one point, you, I still have the notes. You pick your hard, and then I said, or you pick your delight. Mm -hmm. You pick. You know, I love a good ribeye and a salad with Caesar dressing, and I am delighted when I have that. Mm -hmm. And it's within that framework. Yeah. Right? So mm -hmm. we get to pick that. And it honors our body when we do. And the same thing with these soul things or emotional things. Like, pick what feeds you, but then honor your soul by doing it every day. Mm -hmm. And then see what happens. And, and I, I've only seen good things happen for people. I did a, a workshop like this right before the pandemic with a group of women and then came back to the same women 14 months later when we were out of lockdown and, and did a part two. But many of them were like, what we talked about in February 2020 saved me because mm. they had been kind of coached to choose a habit. And so through that uncertain time, through the fear, through the different family situations we all had, they were able, some of them, to engage in these soul tending things and came out on the other side. Mm. So I, I've seen it work over and over, just like we've seen keto mm -hmm. work over and over. And it's so many, so much the same. Choosing some healthy daily habits makes a huge difference. And that's what I always say, like, if we can just string together these good keto days in a row, you know, we have it made. And mm -hmm. I feel like the same thing. Imagine doing both, like your soul and your body. Mm -hmm. And obviously, there's more than those 10. There's a whole world out there. Um, these are based on what's called spiritual disciplines across mm -hmm. religions too. Mm -hmm. Tried and proven ways people have tended to themselves. Uh, and so a lot of them come out of that, these ancient practices. Mm -hmm. But yet I think they're kind of made fresh for a new world and new people. And that we can really, as busy women, do them on the fly mm -hmm. and see the benefits. Yeah. Well, my first thought when you said you had your procedures this morning, I'm like, oh, you could take your journal and sit and write while you're in the office. But it was like, oh, wait, you covered how that yeah. used to be how you would do things yeah. instead of actually making the space for it by itself. But I also learned, and I'll just throw this in, I talked about uh, there's a thing, you know, habit stacking, and we've talked about that in keto, I think, mm -hmm. too, that there's a lot of power and you put a, a few good habits together. Mm -hmm. And so I have learned my quiet, my, quiet, my journaling, my spiritual reading, and I keep it literally in a bag by my chair in case something like that happens. Or when I travel, yeah, take the bag. I No one taught me that in seminary. No one taught me that in counseling. I learned it like when I'm doing carpooling or whatever and having to wait in a line, I can take it to go. Mm -hmm. Nobody nobody teaches you can take spiritual habits to go. <laughs> yeah. so, uh, you're right. Totally. You could do it in a waiting room if you wanted to. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I can see we've got somebody live here. So whoever that is, if you want to type in, um, if you've got a question for Dr. Cindy here, let's see. Um, oh, it's Catherine, I think, that might be watching this here. So Catherine, if you have any questions, let us know. I've got my notifications open that should show me. It, it's a couple minute delay, so we'll hang out here for a little bit and see if you have any questions for um for Dr. Cindy here, um, and while we're waiting to see if any questions come in live, any last wrap up, uh, anything else you were that's important along these lines? I could talk to... about it forever, and I told you yeah. I, sometimes this is expanded into a whole weekend of teaching for me, but um, I, I just feel like it's good for all of us, it's good to teach mm -hmm. kids some of this. Um, there's just a lot of, of, and it's good for, you know, we've talked before about some of the trauma we carry from life mm -hmm. or grief. Most of us 
cumulatively carry that stuff. And sometimes we're afraid to be still or afraid to journal because we think like, oh, that yucky stuff's going to come up. And what I always tell people is like, you're carrying that yucky stuff. You live through it already. Mm. It's in you. It's, it's eating on you and working on you to write it down or be still with it for a minute is transformative, you know, and, that, and th there's a teaching that says, if you do not transform your pain, you'll transmit it. And so again, imagine the health of just daily facing what you can, maybe a little tiny piece of it and working, or you may decide, I have also decided at times in my life, oh, not only do I need a keto coach, I need a therapist right now mm -hmm. on this issue. This is too yeah. hard for me, too big, too painful. And I have never hesitated to reach out to a, a therapist in, in many seasons of life. They've been key in walking me through something painful, getting me to a place I never would have probably gotten to on my own. Mm -hmm. But it's certainly not a reason to avoid yourself or your self-care. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if you find that something comes up and takes page after page or page, and, you know, or makes you unable to sit still, then maybe it's time to get a helper. Mm. Yeah, someone to guide you through it. Yeah. Um, and that in itself can be a whole other uh, technique yeah. of soul yeah. care. Yeah. So, uh, get, so comments so far. Uh, this is so good um, with lots and lots of exclamation points. Um, um, love the phrase, honor your soul. And uh, no questions. Uh, is it soul tending just to be present right now? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I just got tingles from that one. So love it. Love it. And, and right. you know, I would just challenge everybody one more time before we go. Just pick one thing that delights you. And it, it might be the bubble bath. Like every time I take a bath, I'm like, why do I not do this every day? Mm -hmm. You know, like what's wrong with me? Because that is so, that's a classic one. Mm right um or maybe it is you go to the spa and let someone else take care of you uh, but again imagine just picking the thing that popped out to you today and starting it tomorrow at the top of your list and then and then see what happens yeah and for for me it it really helped after this you know doing this last month it helped me some things that i had been doing that were soul care that i felt guilty about like oh taking this time when i could be doing so much more and now it's like no 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 these are really good and these are important that i continue to do them so for somebody like me it's like now i have permission <laughs> to do those mm -hmm. with letting go of the guilt at the same time so and i'll say to you i'm i've seen you work and you work really hard in an hour whether it's one-on-one -on -one or with four of us or six of us or and so to me, it may not be super emotional. I mean, it's not grief, grief therapy or something, but it's like, it's a lot of teaching and a lot of, I mean, so it's like, you do need a few hours off between some stuff yeah, or a good weekend with none of it or mm -hmm. whatever, you know, that, that, <laughs> otherwise you're going to bring that least Carol to us. Mm. Well, for me, I mean, just sharing even more personal things for me, it was part of my big move from Seattle to Arizona was, doesn't really hit specifically on any of these, but it was a, definitely 100% a soul tending change that I made, like mental health and well-being, just being in more sun and less gray overcast days was something that I recognized about five years ago that that was going to be healthier place for me to live mm -hmm. and then honoring that knowledge as well is that part of that continuing that is that every single day I block off on my calendar a two-hour period that I end up you know at least an hour that I'm outside in the sun in the in the not inside right. um and that's something I've realized, you know, it was like, oh, I'm guilty about this. It was like, no, I have to, I need to do this. Like if I'm, if I moved here and sat inside in the air conditioning all day long, I might as well just be back mm -hmm. in Seattle. So, um, and as well as just starting out my morning by going and looking at my, 
my plants. Like that's another thing for me. That's just this kind of like quiet solitude, um, being in the present moment, like, and just looking at the plants and how they've grown and things like that too. So that just personally sharing here, anyone watching this in the future, please feel free to share what you do for your, um, soul care. I've been working on the subtract, getting, taking out things of my life and things as well. Like, you know, I think you shared at one point kind of paring down your wardrobe as well. And I'm in that point of like, uh, like I've got probably four times as many clothes as, as I could ever wear and enjoy in my life. So, um, so, so simplifying a closet yeah. can feed your soul. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. And then I like what you talked about plants. A lot of people that they'll do a garden or whatever. I've often said, if you want to know the condition of my soul, look at my back patio. Mm. And sometimes it's very telling. <laughs> my plants and the greenery and the sitting outside and a fountain, all those things are. And it, it's a reflection to me of my soul, how, mm. how it is. Mm. And so, yeah, that's awesome. And then I'll say one more time, the comedy thing, laughter is one of the best soul feeding things we have. Mm. It's universal across every person in the world. Laughter and tears. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so to offer that to help people just laugh, mm. it's a gift, but you can't do it out of emptiness. Mm -hmm. And I've learned that enough speaking. Like I, I need to be funny and I need to help people get to a meaningful place, but you can't, that doesn't come except in the margin. Mm. Like even being able to think of something funny, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. So, I think, I think that's another gift that probably comes out of you taking care of yourself. Yeah. Wow. So great. Yes. So great, Cindy. Oh, I'm so you. glad. Thank you so much for taking the time mm -hmm. and um, can't wait to see more and more comments come in as we share this more um, out. So any last uh, thoughts, words, comments in closing? So animals are another one. See, my dog showed up right here, but uh, that's another one that maybe we should just hang with our pets more and act like them. Through the pandemic, I kept looking at my dog and going, she's not worried. I mean, look, yeah, right? she seems fine. Maybe I should be like her. So that's i was thinking today about like what emotions do animals even have right they don't i mean i think some of i think dogs can worry yeah. cats don't worry yeah um they they have happiness content they can have fear mm -hmm. but they don't have anger unless it's that's their dog it's kind of, yeah yeah it's just like either they're afraid and it's instantly gone or yeah, be more like our, be more like our pets. And they rest a lot. Yeah. I, yeah. I thought maybe I should just lay down when she does. But <laughs> anyway, well, thank you. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Oh, great as always. Love it. So thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you again next time. Bye.